This week, there was a story where Jerry Jones came out and acknowledged he's the one that screwed up the Cowboys dynasty with Jimmy Johnson. And I think it's something that I've understood. Jimmy understood. Uh, you know, it, Dave, I've never even asked you this question before, but I mean, it, it, it's fairly obvious from my purview that basically when Jerry bought the Cowboys, he had to get the finances right. So he spent the next two years in his side of the building. Jimmy and you had to get the football operation right. And you were on your side of the building. But my feeling was always once the Cowboys started winning a Super Bowl, Jimmy was getting all the credit and Jerry wanted to have fun with his toy. And he, he had gotten by that time the finances right. The money was pouring in. Is that a too simplistic look at what happened? No, I, I think that number one, Jerry played football, right? He had a son, Stephen, who was a quarterback at Arkansas. And Jerry was very involved with the program, watching practices. He had an office that looked right down in, in Fayetteville, looked right down on the office. So he was a football business guy. He wasn't uh, Wayne Huizinga, who I worked for at the Dolphins, who was worried about starting another Fortune 500 company. And that's all we cared about. Uh, so, Jerry, I think that football part of it, but I sat there, what you're talking about, and I remember Jerry saying to Jimmy, hey, Jimmy, you know, I've invested everything and cashed out all I got. So between the two of us, you know, we've got to make this thing go. So I've, I've never – let that thought leave my mind when I see Jerry Jones and I hear some of the things because I, uh, I was there. I mean, I know how invested he was. To your point, where did it go astray? The first two years, there was not, I mean, Jerry was doing the marketing and he was organizing TV stations and he was, he was bringing the, the Blue Star, his own TV show and everything right into the Cowboys facility so we wouldn't have to watch. He was looking at how we could make a buck, changing the advertisement, all that stuff. And I, I can remember when it happened. It was, it was our last year. It was a Super Bowl year. And traditionally, we would head out for a jog around noon. And Jimmy always kind of wanted his he, – he believed that you got more done out in a social situation than you did sitting around a boardroom because guys would relax a little bit, say some things, that they might not say otherwise and, and everybody, and we would still get it done. So we would take these jogs two or three days a week. We would run a couple miles and walk back and it was all football. Who we playing? What's going on? Was it draft? Was it summer training camp? Was it season? And we're heading out, getting ready to go. And Jimmy come walking out of the locker room and he did his press conference right before this. And he walks out and they're setting up tables and chairs all through this one press meeting area. And I can remember like yesterday, Jimmy turned and was asking the guys who were setting it up, what's going on? And they said, Jerry's having a press conference. And he said, he is, is he? And had no idea. The week before that, I don't know, if it, I think it might have been Troy. We turned the ball over two or three times. And one of the questions to Jimmy Johnson was, Troy Aikman had a couple of turnovers, you know, is it? And Jimmy said, let me just say this, whether it's Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Jay Novacek, our tight end. If you turn the football over, we can't win and you're not going to play. Well, two hours later in the press conference, it comes out and they ask Jerry, you know, what do you think about? And he says, we're fine. There's, you know, basically there's not an issue. Well, that was the beginning of the end of all of a sudden, there's more, you can only have one voice. And, and from that day on, you know, Jimmy just kind of had his guard up and, and that's when Jerry started uh, having his weekly press conferences and he was serving steak. I remember that he was serving the media steak. It was the best press conference in time to come after those guys come just to eat, but he filled the room. He filled the room. Do you remember the moment Jimmy said, I can't do it anymore? You know, it was interesting. After the second year, I was at the Bears. North Turner had just left. And, and remember the first part of this story now, our noon jogs. And we did these jogs at Pitt when I was, Jimmy and I were assistants. We did these jogs at Oklahoma State 
we did these jogs at University of Miami. So this was nothing new. This was his, he wanted to have his guys, his inner circles, he called them, get around. Him. And when I left, Norv left, Tony Wise, the line coach left. We were out on Jimmy's boat and we were down in Miami and it was me and him and the wives and, and our attorney. And we were just sitting there and, and we had been sipping a few Heinekens during the course of the past 10 hours, I think it was. And, uh, Jim, Jimmy said, you know, Dave, he said, uh, boy, this is, uh, this is a challenge. You know, he says, fun of this thing is, is really, I'm, I'm really having a challenge with this. And he didn't go any deeper. And then I was at, Orla I, we were up in Orlando at the league meetings. And that's when everything broke loose. Jimmy and Jerry had some, uh, some words. We were at the meetings and we used to sit together at all the NFL meetings. So I was waiting for him down by the lobby and he came down <laughs> and he had that look on his face. And I said, meetings this way. And he says, not my meeting. And he was heading for the door and he was driving a Corvette then. And he jumped in that Corvette and gone. And he left the meetings. And so I went in and I started saying, what happened? And that's when they said that, you know, the comment that Jerry made in front of the media that, he could get 500 guys to coach the Dallas Cowboys and win a Super Bowl. And one of the media guys or somebody, I'm not sure who, called up to Jimmy's room and said, well, you're missing a good one. Let me tell you what was said. So that kind of was but, – but I think at that point, Jerry believed that he could win Colin and, and do it without Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy was, was the guy. If Jimmy wasn't going to be the guy and he wasn't going to be the voice – he wasn't going to share that with anybody. Well, Barry won for a couple of years. And then over time, I thought Barry was a little over his head. Um, you know, I, I was saying something today. If you look at the NFL, 13 of the 14 highest paid Cowboys, Dave, are players they drafted. Now, that would seem like the right thing to do. But the truth is teams that are much better than them, Kansas City, Buffalo, the L.A. Rams, Seattle. Many of their top players are not guys they drafted. Their loyalty yeah. is the best player available. And I said, when I look at the Cowboys, I see it's almost like Walmart, the, the Walton family. It's it's a it's a very insular business, and they don't listen to a lot of outside voices. And the Cowboys, if you look at their roster outside of Amari Cooper, it's hey, we drafted them, we know what we're doing, we don't need your opinion, and we're going to pay them. I mean, the Rams have Whitworth and Jalen Ramsey and Matt Stafford and Robert that, I Woods. Think, I think it goes back to when we were there because we won. We were the youngest football team in the NFL, and we won the Super Bowl. We were playing basically with a bunch of young college kids that like just playing the game. And I think that that's the foundation. That's the DNA that Jerry Jones is, has in his mind. And – there's no doubt in my mind that that's that that's why that happens. I mean, that's he believes it can happen that way. And and I, you know, I talked to Jimmy earlier this morning because we were talking about the article yesterday and, and what Jerry said. And uh, uh, it, there's there's no doubt about it that Jerry has that blueprint of what Jimmy put together and how we did it back then. And that's how he sees it being done. And he's. He's having, he, he doesn't want to waver from that much. You know, it's funny. Uh, Jerry said, you know, Jimmy's my friend. And I kind of rolled my eyes and I thought, well, they wouldn't spit on each other. D do you, I mean, if Jimmy and Jerry were in the same room, would it be cordial? What's it like now? Yes, it, it would be cordial. Uh, I'll tell you what, what's happened. Jimmy, you know, obviously going into the Hall of Fame, there's three Dallas Cowboys going in for our Cowboy fans out there. They know this. Cliff Harris, Drew Pearson, and Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy was moving ahead full speed with his little party, as everybody has parties. And Jerry and him talked. I don't know who called who. I think Jerry called Jimmy from the yacht. From Jerry was out on a boat somewhere, and he called him, and he said, hey, we got three Cowboys going in. Why don't we have one big Dallas Cowboy party? And let me kind of organize it. So Jimmy and Jerry, they talked within the last month or so. And, uh, and that's what's going to happen. So the party is going to be a Dallas Cowboy party. And 
there's going to be people from the Drew Pearson, Cliff Harris era, and Jimmy Johnson era all together. And, uh, and, and Jerry's kind of coordinating the whole thing. Again, Jerry's in charge. 